This is a sad day for us here at CBS News. Our friend and colleague and good man, Morley Safer, died today. He was 84. Morley was one of the premier journalists of the past half century and a pillar of the leading television news broadcast of all time, 60 Minutes. Steve Croft now on the life and legacy of Morley Safer. And here we are, on board the good ship Dandahalu, bound from Mali to Furidu. Suppose you had a few dollars and you had to get from Paris to Istanbul. Then this is how you would go. First class on the Orient Express. From the dawn of his career to its twilight, Morley Safer was above all a writer, a brilliant writer. He stares down from the podium like some benevolent bird of prey eyes staring past that great beak. It's all wonderfully choreographed, every gangly movement. He knew, as Mark Twain put it, the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the difference between lightning and the lightning bug. Tarkuk Lasuria, a fit old man in his 94th year, is on his way to his mother's birthday party. I'm here. I'm here. He relished working behind the camera, in front of it. Right here. Not so much. People might find it very odd. Come on. But I really don't like being on television. It is not natural to be talking to a piece of machinery. But the money is very good. The predominant feeling among the Europeans of Central Africa is... For 60 remarkable years, Morley did speak his words into the machinery first from the Middle East and Europe for Canadian television, then for CBS News. As the role of American troops in Vietnam changes... He first went to Vietnam in 1965. Come this way, Con. His report on Marines burning the village of Cam Ne shocked America and enraged the Pentagon. This is what the war in Vietnam is all about. The president thought he might be a communist. Somebody explained to President Johnson that I was a Canadian, and he said, well, I knew there was something wrong with it. I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Morley Safer. He joined 60 Minutes in 1970, doing his fair share of serious stories. But he soon began staking out his own territory. The offbeat, the humorous, and the absurd. I don't want that hand on at all. Heel. Come on, boy. People trek from every corner of England to this country lane in Hertfordshire. Walkie to watch her work her wonders on dogs. Good morning. In 1979, he interviewed the Muppets. Is your wife here? <laughs> no, she's not. Great. <laughs> the fortune teller is... Morley had a passion for art. He sketched, he painted. I was giving a definition of uh, life and death. This is the eternal. This is what and in 1993, he riled the art establishment with a piece suggesting some of the emperors of the modern art world wear no clothes. It's... Uh, a white rectangle. Right. Uh, he's a minimal artist. And, uh... I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Some of his best interviews were with famous women and a Wintour of Vogue magazine. A bitch. A Perfectionist. Bitch. Perfectionist. Well, let's try bitch first. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Madoff, wife of convicted Ponzi schemer Bernie Madoff. You must have known. I trusted him. Film legend Catherine Hepburn. Do you feel like a legend? I don't think you ever feel like anything. You feel like a boa. <laughs> Dolly Parton. You won't ask me to sing it or you want me to just whoop it out for you? <laughs> just whoop it out for me. <laughs> Can I play you a song? Of course you may. Listen here, boys, I'm telling you now. His reports over the years touch many millions of viewers who saw through his eyes and felt through his words. I'm a 60-minute man. The beauty the complexities and the absurdities of the modern world. I've led a charmed life as a reporter, as an individual. A lot of it is blood, sweat, toil, and tears, but a lot of it is pure, unadulterated luck, and I've been a very lucky guy. <laughs>